But let's talk about the big mover from the broader markets, actually. We have Mahindra and Mahindra Financial. That's the stock on our radar. The earnings came in lower than what the street was working with. The net interest margins coming in at nine-quarter lows. Their asset quality as well has worsened a tad bit, and that's what led to the profitability decline. Mr. Ramesh Ayer, the vice chairman and managing director at Mahindra and Mahindra Financial Services, joins us to give us his insight into the quarter's numbers. Uh, hi, Mr. Ayer. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, the pain point has to be on the NIMS, right? Could you tell us the incremental cost of funds? What's it coming at if it compares with what you're currently borrowing at? And what does it mean in terms of NIMS from year on? So in terms of our current borrowing is concerned, it's about 7.4, 7.5. But, uh, you know, the real concern is uh, we expected the borrowing cost will come down post-festival and we had talked about it uh, earlier in the first quarter or before that. Unfortunately, that is not to happen. And we had not pushed up our rate, thinking the rates would come down. But I think uh, now that the clear clarity is that by March it's not coming down, surely our lending rates are going to go up. We are pushing up our lending rates. That's one. Second is, you know, the pre-owned vehicle, the availability is still an issue and uh, they come at a better yield. And if that was to happen, the NIMS would have looked different. Uh, the third is, there is a prime segment which we consciously have got into. And they come at a lower yield, but they also come at a lower cost of operations as well as lower credit costs. So we are clear as the rates move up, and then of course, at least next year for sure, the rates will come down. Uh, we are confident that by March, we will move to a 7% NIMS. And then going forward, if the borrowing cost has to come down, you will see further improvement. Mm. Okay. Mr. Ayer, hi, good morning. Uh, there was a, a bit of a spike in credit costs as well. Uh, slightly higher than what we saw in the first quarter. Could you explain that, sir? And what's the outlook? So if you look at our provision cover has also gone up from 60 to about 61 point uh, odd. This comes by a formula of the LGD. Uh, otherwise, if you look at our uh, GS3 and GS2, GS3 has remained stable and GS2 has actually come down. So there is no pressure on the asset quality. It is just the provision number which has gone up. And if you compare it with the previous quarter, I mean, last year's second quarter, it's because last year's second quarter had a provision reversal, which is not there because that time our NPAs were elevated and you got a benefit of the reversal. So we don't see a pressure on the asset quality front, but you do see about 100 crores increase that has happened and that's purely by LGD. And there has been a little increase in our in, uh, collections from the tractor front, which has actually got postponed from September to October. It's just a one-month shift which has happened, and you'll see that change in this quarter. Okay, that was the delay in collections was largely because of that, uh, you know, the rainfall issue, right? Because of which the tractor delayed, segments... Delayed monsoons, delayed monsoons obviously delayed pushes monsoons. some of this, and then now that things have stabilized, we have already seen them come back. Okay, so what does that mean for the gross NPAs as we move into the next couple of quarters? If you're saying that this is just a, you know, one, two quarter phenomenon, uh, then do you see any recovery? I mean, your gross NPAs are almost 4.3%. What is the outlook for the full year? No, so 4.3 is lower than what it was in March. It's never the situation when it comes to the first half. And uh, we have a 60 odd percent cover already that we are carrying. And clearly, with the improved cash flows that we would see in the next two quarters, I think we would see improvement to this number further from here. Second way to look at it is if you look at our stage two, they have been showing declining trend, which means there are no forward flows that are happening. I think put the two together, clearly we have visibility for the stage three numbers to be lower than where they are. Okay. All right. Give us a couple of numbers, Mr. Ayer, on the NIMS. Uh, you know, you're telling us you're going to be, uh, uh, you know, repricing some of uh, your loans. So tell us, what should the NIMS look like? And also credit cost, I think it was around 1.7, 1.8%, but you're guiding that it'll come lower towards the end of FY24. So both these two numbers, NIMS and credit cost? So as far as the NIMS are concerned, we'll first move to a 6.8, maybe this quarter end, and then we expect by March to touch 7% as far as NIMS are concerned. And in as far as our the stage three is uh, the credit cost is concerned, as I said, the you know, this quarter and the next quarter are the great quarters from a collection perspective. And which is why we've kind of guided to say it'll be anywhere between 1.5 to 1.7 as far as the credit cost is concerned. Mm. Uh, Ms. Ayer, uh, you know, th there was, uh, I think we've spoken about this earlier as well, that w can, can one, should one expect, uh, what, what can lead to a more kind of sustainable kind of performance? Because there's a bit, of, there's a fair bit of seasonality. Uh, you know, there's a fair bit of up and down in the, in the, in the earnings uh, uh, trajectory in that sense. Is there any way 
what, what can you do to reduce that volatility, sir? Because that is what the uh, markets are also uh, unhappy with. So one of the one of the action very clearly is that we have got into a segment of customer which is the prime segment, which as I said comes at a little lower yield, but they are expected to be more stable in terms of the credit cost is concerned. Till such time we have a book which is more of a earn and pay segment. I think you will see this volatility, but that book is slowly running off, and we are adding the new set of book to that which is the primex and the. Uh, pre-owned vehicle segment. I think what you would see is uh, already you're seeing in stage two and stage three a stability. I think the provision stability will start happening because it's an, you know, at the end of the day, an ACL model which takes the last 42 months into account when you put that into the formula. Once we have the old book slowly run off, which will be another two quarters or so, you will see this completely stabilize. Mm. Uh, you know, you were telling us briefly about the tractor loans and how there was some delay in collections, etc. What about the other segments that you cater to, right? Whether it's UV loans, cars, pre-owned cars as well. Uh, are you seeing any kind of pressure over there at all? And what is the prognosis over the next few quarters? I think we're seeing no pressure. Even in tractors, it was very, very temporary two weeks delay. You know, when you have a half yearly installment collectible and they get shifted by a month or so, you have this kind of an impact. As otherwise, on an overall basis, we don't see, and that can be seen from our disbursement numbers as well. The demands are holding up, the sentiments are positive, and I always said this, that when you see demand for the vehicle, it's nothing but the underlying cash flow is what it speaks of, and you also see in our collection efficiency. So we don't see any, any negative sentiments out there. The Shara festival that we just saw was phenomenally good from a retail perspective, and so seems to be the Diwali. Okay, all right. Mr. Ayer, you know, disbursements have been good, but it's not really translating to AUM growth. So tell us what's the guidance on that front. AUM growth, say, for this fiscal as well as the next? But why do you say that? We have a 27% growth, and I think that's a very healthy growth over the previous. And we do expect that uh, by March, you will continue to see uh, AUM growth upward of 20-22%. Hmm. Upward of 20-22%. Okay, got that. Uh, finally, you know, the housing finance segment has remained weak for the longest time. Can you tell us what's happening there? Uh, there's been a lot of dispersals in quarter two, but there's been no AUM growth in housing finance particularly. Uh, and even the asset quality is on the weaker side. What's the outlook and how long do you think it would take before recovery comes through? I think we've talked about it in the past. Clearly, we are now moving towards affordable as one of the key segments for the book. And you will see it in the next three, four quarters that the affordable lending is higher than the rural lending. And the rural lending is running out faster because the uh, assets are maturing. And which is why you don't see an AUM growth while you see a disbursement growth. But no sooner we get into at least about 30-40% of the book come from affordable, which are long term, you will see the book growth as well beginning to happen. And the strategy there very clearly is while to stay in rural high end, but it's also important to get into the affordable piece. And in the next year or so, you will see close to 50% of the book come from affordable housing. Okay, Mr. Ayer, thanks a lot for joining in. And, uh, you know, I mean, the stock is under a lot of pressure. So hopefully things improve uh, both in your core segment as well as in the housing finance space. That's m, &M Financial, the biggest loser right now, almost 10% lower. But